Uh, my name is Paul Rose with Mr. Rose Photography and today we're going to start a new series which is uh, Mr. Rose Photography on the road. Today we're joined with a young up-and-coming speedway rider, Mr. James Chattin, who uh, is based in the West Midlands in the heart of the Black Country. I understand you've been riding a few years. Yeah, been playing a few years but just started riding last season like competitively about six months last season in the MDL. So I hope this season I can get a full year. Okay, the season uh, is from uh, March to October, the speedway season. Yeah, that's correct. It's uh, through the summer, so the tracks don't get icy, like through the winter, just better weather. Okay, and so what you've been doing at the moment, obviously off-season, so what, how your time took up during the off-season? Just basically getting all the bikes together, just all new stuff getting all the bits that you'd want on the bike. Okay, well, when I arrived today, uh, you, you and your dad was uh, obviously putting some of your new uh, fiberglass uh, mud guards on the back, and uh, I lent a hand, and uh, obviously you've gone for an all black look this year. Yeah, I think all black looks a lot smarter than a lot of bright colours, and uh, black goes with a lot of colours, so can pick black, black and a different colour, which I'm going for black and purple this season. Okay, black and purple. Okay, tell, tell me something about the bike. Obviously, it's uh, a speedway bike, as we know. Uh, understand, no brakes? No brakes whatsoever. It's just full throttle, a clutch, and that's all that's on there. And I understand it's a 500cc uh, cylinder single engine. 500cc, no gears, just one gear which is you change the back for the cog which makes it go faster or slower and that's and obviously the different size tracks I mean some tracks are bigger than others aren't they so how do you how do you prepare for things like that well the bigger tracks you have to change the back cog to a smaller one so you can get more speed and the smaller tracks of course you change to a uh, bigger cog so that the wheel spins more, so you can get round the corner. Okay, and obviously you've been riding a couple of years. Uh, obviously you've not been on every track in the country, but uh, tracks you have been on, which which has been your favourite? Obviously the new Bellevue uh, National Stadium. That's got to be my favourite track to ride on. It's big, fast, and also it's nice and smooth, so you're not jumping everywhere when you're going around the corners. Yes, I actually went up there this this year to watch uh, my team, Cradley Heath, ride in the National League up there, and it looks a big, fast track. The riders are obviously struggling for speed. If you haven't got the speed, you obviously can't keep up with the rider in front. So that's all important on a big track like that. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of difference. I, uh, I used a 61 sprocket, and my speed wasn't any good at all. I needed to get lower. So, you know, next time... Well, if there is a next time, I can learn and use a smaller sprocket. And okay, and all the tracks, obviously, that's your favourite track. What's your least favourite track that you've done so far? It's either Buxton or Wolverhampton, because there's like, there's two different bends on both the tracks. There's a decent swoop bend, and then there's a really tight bend. So, like, you've got to have control of the bike all the time, and you've got to learn which corner what to do on each corner. Yes, I've actually been on Buxton myself and it's like, one, the first bend you're actually going downhill, aren't you? Yep. And the second bend you're actually going uphill, so it's a bit weird. But it's a nice wide track. Yeah, it is nice and wide, it's just, it helps you out, because if you make a mistake you've got a lot of room to... Uh... And the big massive cobbles on it sometimes. Though. Yeah, that's... Yeah, Which that's do hurt when they hit you at... Because uh... obviously you get up to speeds probably 50, 60 miles an hour sometimes. Yeah, the better riders get up to them speeds, but... Most standard. You get quite fast, but it's not too fast. Okay, then. So, obviously, you've been riding a couple of years now. You've, as I say, you've been riding the Midland De Development League, I, I do believe it's called. Um, obviously, this time next year, uh, obviously another year this year in the Midland Development League, hopefully if you get a sign-in. Any, any, any anything in the pipeline at the moment? Nothing at the moment. Uh I don't think the MDL AGM has been announced at the moment, so no teams have sorted anything. Yeah. But uh, I did ride for Scunthorpe a few meetings last season, so hopefully they'll have me in mind. 
Yeah, that's very good. I mean, I've been to Scunthorpe as well. It's a nice, that's a nice track as well. And obviously, they do a, a winter series, I do believe. So obviously, you do a lot of winter training at Scunthorpe and other tracks. Yeah, I've been to a one uh, winter series this year. Wasn't my best go, but the track wasn't the best either. But you got to ride in all all types of tracks. You got to ride all in all types, types of, of weathers. So you got to get used to it. You got to practice on all of them. Okay, so another year in the uh, obviously 2017 Midland 11 League, and this time next year, obviously getting your bikes ready. And do you hope to progress to get a national league spot in a, a year or two years? I mean, how do you think you'll develop this year? I mean, are you confident you can get a national league level for next year? Or um, I hope so. I hope to get reserve or even get a few guest bookings in the national league. So I hope to be towards the top of the MDL and. Uh, Hope to get a few guest bookings this year, if not next year. I mean, that's good. I mean, you can get a, obviously some guest bookings when uh, riders have injuries. Um, and another thing that is a thing to talk about injuries as well. I mean, uh, have you had any injuries since you've started, or have you been quite lucky? I haven't had worse injuries. I've had a few, of course, injuries. You will get some, but uh, no broken bones. No broken bones yet, to <laughs> Well, That's good. <laughs> okay then. So. Um, Obviously, we're here today to obviously um, to up your profile, uh, to get you some more sponsorships. I understand you've uh, gotten some of your Kevlar's made, and you um, obviously got some spaces for people's names, people's companies. Um, obviously, this is your chance to uh, push that, so uh, we'll have details on the bottom to get in contact with, um, with James on our YouTube channel. Uh, but um, obviously, your chance to ask for help. Yeah, it's all, uh, everything helps. Just try and get as much as you can because it's a very expensive sport and uh, you need all the help you can from everyone. So if you could help, it would be a pleasure. That's great. Okay, talking about costs anyway. So obviously it's a basic Spiro machine. I mean, um, say a back tyre, how much is a back tyre? Back tyre, about £40 just for the tyre. So. Uh, how long will that last? Well, one meeting, which the norm, the higher riders, it lasts one meeting. But my level, you can get about three, four meetings out of you, max. And obviously, uh, no, uh, obviously that you don't get paid in this league, do you? Nope, no money whatsoever. But sometimes they do offer you about a liter of oil or well, a liter of methanol. But that's about it. Yes, yeah, so after these bikes don't run on petrol or diesel, they run on uh, methanol. Yeah, it runs on methanol. So that's all that goes through. How much is that a gallon, if you don't mind me asking? About £40. £40 a gallon? Oh. I'll speak from the mechanic, it's £7 a gallon. <laughs> £7 uh, uh, the chap in the background, which uh, we. Uh, you keep uh, putting in. Uh, it's uh, that's his dad. That's James's dad. Obviously, he's uh, a big influence on his career, and obviously, he used to ride uh, Speedway himself uh, back in the day at uh, the old Dudleywood Stadium. And obviously, he's got his son into it, and uh, obviously, helps him out financially. I do believe. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, he's the mechanic. He's his mechanic uh, during race meetings. So. Obviously, uh, talking about old times, uh, obviously you must have some heroes in the sport. So, uh, obviously, probably going back when you were a young kid, did you uh, go to the Speedway? Um, I didn't go to the Speedway that often when I was young, because I used to do Cycle Speedway, which I was into a lot. And uh, I only started Speedway, well, started watching it about five years. But I do know a lot of the old Cradley riders and been watching them on YouTube. So, yeah, I like, well, Greg Hancock, of course, he's still riding. Yes, he's, he's, he's 40, 46 years old and he's world champion. Yeah. I mean, that is that is an achievement. Four, year, four times world champion at 46 and he's still going strong. And he missed one Grand Prix in his whole career. I mean, that is remarkable. I mean, would you like a career like that? I'd love a career like that. If I was still that active at his age, it'd be amazing. So, hopefully... It'll go that way, and I can get there. And obviously, some of the younger riders. I mean, who do you who do you look up to? Um, obviously, uh, any obviously, you have 
Crayleys have um, come back at a national league level, but uh, obviously uh, Wolverhampton's not too far away, uh, Coventry. Uh, any elite league riders you look up to? Uh, well, Tyler Woffenden's probably the one, the most British, pretty young. And, uh, yeah, Ty. Ty Wolfenden is a uh, British, uh, well, was a British champion. He's been two times world champion. And uh, obviously this year, he have to get his Grand Prix uh, crown back. Um, do you think... Who do you think will be going for the title this year? Obviously, Greg is the defending champion. Ty wants his title back. Anybody else you think will be uh, pushing for that top spot? Um, I think Bartosz Schmarslik will have a chance. He'll come third. He's pretty quick. And, uh, well, all the other ones, they're, they're all in Jason Doyle, yeah. They're all in competitiveness. I mean, Jason Doyle, I mean, to be honest, he, he probably would have wanted to and got injured in uh, Torren uh, the last book rat two rounds um, so obviously he's going to be one of the favourites and okay. um, we're just going to talk about a bit about the equipment so uh, James you need to wear a lot of equipment to uh, ride Speedway yeah you got to be protected because when you fall off at speeds or you go on bikes like these it, it hurts a lot so you got to try and stay protected at all time and what kind of speeds do you, do you get up to on the track personally I'd say about well, 50 miles an hour you can get up to, but yeah, about 50, 60 miles an hour you, you can get up to on the straights. And it's a, like a it's a hard uh, shell surface, so uh, obviously risk of burns and um, obviously it's quite hard when you hit the floor. Yeah, you get a lot of burns and grazes when you uh, slide off, but there can be serious injuries as well because it's pretty hard impact when you hit the floor, so... Okay, well in between us here we've got your uh, your Kevlars, which are your old last year's Kevlars. I know you're having some uh, new ones uh, made for this season, which starts, uh, as we said, in March. So these are like a, a Kevlar material, which is like sort of a, a nylon-y, um, like plastic material. So this helps risk from burns and grazes. Yeah, it does help a lot because uh, it stops... It stops ripping, it doesn't rip as much, so you don't come off. So, yeah. As we can see, the uh, knees are a bit... Uh, shall they? We can see, actually, it's like, it is burnt. Obviously, that's from like exhausts and uh, scraping across the floor at high speed. Yeah, they're a bit rough practising, so I've been falling off quite a lot. <laughs> as I say, I remember some, he's having some new, um, some new uh, Kevlar's made. Obviously, he's gone for the black and purple look, I do believe, this year. Yeah, black and purple. I just think black goes with any colour, and I like purple. I think it goes well with it. So, okay. So there's some. Uh, he's asked for some sponsorship. So there is obviously you can see on this Kevlar's there's obviously companies' names and people's names. So there is some spots left available on your Kevlar's this year. I do believe. Yeah, there's a few spots left. So any help, it will all uh, it will all get to Speedway and all the equipment what's needed. OK, we'll put a link uh, down the bottom uh, of this uh, description panel uh, how you can help James out this year if you uh, want to and uh, get your name on his Kevlar's for this season. OK, so uh, obviously, what's, what's this, what's this uh, equipment there? Uh, that's the back protector, so that, it goes on your back, of course, and it stops your back from bending and... Impacts, like? Yeah, impacts, and also it goes down to your coccyx so that it doesn't affect your coccyx at the bottom of your spine. So obviously that's the most important thing you, you can wear. I mean, is, is that like part of, is that like you have to wear a back protector? Yeah, I think back protectors pretty much, lead, well, you have to wear it in the sport. Okay. And so this is obviously, obviously shoulders and uh, elbows and obviously a bit of uh, kidney protection there and a bit of... Uh, Overall protection for the upper part of your body. Yeah, that's that helps all the upper part of your body, more lee the arms and the front, and then also that's when you wear the back protector over the top of it, so it covers your back as well. And obviously, the Kevlar. I mean, they used to wear like real proper leathers in the old days, and they, which was really really heavy. So obviously, they've gone to the Kevlar material and the underneath um, stuff, which makes it a lot lighter. Yeah, they say the Kevlar's a lot lighter as well, and 
it doesn't weigh a lot. It just helps protect you a lot more. So obviously the lighter the, the lighter you can go faster. Pretty much. Okay, we'll move on to the boots. Obviously you've got a a right boot which goes on to the foot peg, which I can't you can't probably can't see on the camera, but uh we'll put a picture of uh, what the foot peg looks like. The left foot which is totally flat. So why why is that totally flat? The left foot is totally flat as it goes into a steel shoe. Which I do believe that's a steel shoe. That is a steel shoe. So what so obviously when you go around the corner you you put your left leg down to balance yourself? Yeah, your left leg goes out and it puts a lot of pressure on the uh, on the floor to help you keep balance and keep yourself upright. So it ha also is steel because it slides a lot easier across the track. And yeah. Okay, and that's that's I mean that's quite uh, that's not too heavy as well, so all helps. Then obviously your boots obviously protect your ankles and obviously your shins because obviously uh, the bikes are quite. I mean, how how much how heavy does a, an average bike weigh? About an average bike's about eighty kilos, so it's pretty heavy. So if it hits you. You'll feel it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I mean, it's like all steel and uh, aluminium, so it's going to uh, hurt if you uh, obviously get hit from behind or have a crash with... I mean, there's four other people. There's four people in a race, so there's three other people racing around with you. So obviously if one falls off in front of you, you've uh, you've got to try and avoid them because it's uh, obviously going to hurt. Yep. Yeah, uh, the once... Well, when, you, uh, when someone falls off in front of you... You literally have to put the bike straight down so that you don't run into them. But you try and avoid them as much as possible because you don't want to fall off. But yeah, it is it's scary when you see someone go down in front of you because you don't know what to do. I mean, obviously, if you haven't got it's a split second, so you've got to make a decision like right away, haven't you? Yeah, pretty much. At them speeds, when they fall off, you've caught straight up to them, and the last thing you want to do is jump off the bike. But sometimes you have to do it. And now all the tracks now have got uh, air fencing, which come in a few years ago, probably three, four, five years ago. Uh, obviously, does that help with injuries, uh, hitting an air fence instead of a solid mesh fence? Yeah, of course it helps as you meet in air instead of just hitting straight off wood or mesh, as you say. So it's it takes more of an impact and it's a softer cushioning. OK, so... Uh, and again, this is uh, James Chatham in his workshop, uh, getting his bikes ready for the new season, which starts in March 2017. And um, obviously, if you want to help James, um, I'll leave you the final word for you, so you can ask for ask for any help to uh, in your uh, Spiro career. Yeah, um, well, I hope anyone can help out. I'm str well, I'm not struggling, but it is a lot of money to uh, do when you're on. When, when you've got a low wage job, of course, you've got to put all your money and all your effort in. So it is a lot. So any help would be much appreciated and it will all go to Speedway. OK, James, thank you very much for your time uh, on this uh, evening. I know you're busy getting your bikes ready for uh, the season. So uh, glad you took your time out to uh, speak to us. And I forget we'll put a we'll put a description and uh, contacts. Uh, you can get in contact with James, and uh, help him help him out uh, during the season. Thanks a lot, James. Cheers.